Well, I was probably intending to go slightly more left field with my two choices, um, but I haven't. So the first thing is the official James Bond um, movie book. It kind of taught me how to act, certainly around the opposite sex. Um, I remember sneaking off from school to go home and to watch um, James Bond and not do my homework and um, seem to work out all right in the end. I think my favourite Bond would have been Roger Moore, although he was quite possibly the worst actor. And then my second choice is um, Michael Jackson Bad. This is actually a Japanese edition, which is really cool actually. I might have to get this. I used to um, listen to Bad in the bath and I used to really get on my mother's nerves. Um, well, the first thing I found in this little treasure cove is um, Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. And it was, um, I often asked my dad for book recommendations and he read it for his A-levels when he was like, you know, in the 60s or whatever. Um, it tells the story of a family in like village life in the 1800s in, the, in Britain. And um, yeah, it's just amazing. And Mr. Tolliver, um, he kind of doesn't really understand anything that's going on in in the modernization of, of, uh, of life, I guess. And uh, one of his famous quotes is, "'Tis a puzzling world." And uh, that always stuck with me, and I kind of agree with Mr. Tuller on that one, so uh, enjoy reading that. Next up is, um, actually back to my dad as well, uh, his favorite artist of all time. When we walk into, when I walk into my dad's house, there will invariably be Neil Young playing, like, you know, one of his albums will be on. and. I love the fact that Neil Young used to walk into like studios apparently and uh, the, the other guys in the band had never heard the songs. He'd start playing them, they'd hear it once and then he'd say, right, we're gonna do a take now. And they'd just get up, the rest of the guys who weren't necessarily the best musicians in the world um, would just you know, feel their way through a song. And I think that kind of looseness and um, the excitement that you get the first few times you play a song really comes through with a lot of Crazy Horse recordings. And this is live as well and I mean, you can't get much better than the list of songs on this. It's amazing. So the record I've chosen uh, is Sonic Youth Daydream Nation. Um, it's, uh, the reason I found this record was because of another band called Motorcycle, uh, which was one of the bands that I was growing up with when I was like 13, 14, and it got me really into alternative music. And uh, Sonic Youth was like the band that they were like very influenced by and they were kind of called the Norwegian Sonic Youth and I kind of oh, I have to check this, this band out and that's how I found the record. It's really interesting uh, as well like how um, the motorcycle they did all these like 10 minutes long epic versions and it kind of really influenced how I was thinking about music and how I um, ended up you know experimenting a lot more in the, in the songwriting and producing as well. So. So I'd obviously forgot to mention uh, Sing Along Banjo Party, which <laughs> is also one of uh, the Wombats' favourite albums. Um, we got this when we started and uh, kind of we based our entire sound around this, so um, yeah, well done. Thanks very much. Thanks, uh, Banjo Party. <laughs>